Hello, Internet, and welcome to episode, I'm going to say, 21 of Enter the Dungeon, a brotherly podcast. Who wants to give the recap from last week? Well, I fell asleep, so not me. Oh, gosh. Can you say what so you remember before you fell asleep? Yeah. I don't. Wait. Seriously? I, I don't remember, like, at all what happened. Do you remember where you went? Do you no. remember where you started? I think we started in uh, uh, the port town, whose name I de- totally know. Wait, Chris, I, th- I think your mic's doing something weird. What? I don't know, after he unmuted his mic, we started having weird audio effects. Okay. Okay, let's go to new. So, where did we start? Uh, Cape Salas. Salas. Yes. That one. We started there, and then we went back towards the Planar Forge on the boat, and that's all I remember. You made it into the dungeon that leads to the forge. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Chris, what do you remember? Do you remember being in a room with a small pool of water? And he left. <laughs> Truth be told, last 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 time we recorded, I um, I was falling asleep harder than I do in my math classes. Okay, he's back. Which would be funnier if I weren't a math major, it's just sad. So, Chris, where do you yeah. remember ending? Somewhere between the decision of going down a cave with the river and then going upstairs. Oh, wait. No, I do remember going into the cave. I have a map drawn out of which turns we took. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, wait, you finally started taking notes about something, but... Oh, no, I, it's, it's a useless little map. Oh. So you want to be able to backtrack your way out with it? Probably not. I'd like to pretend I could, but I probably couldn't. Okay. If you'll excuse me, I just have a die to roll real quick. Great. This definitely isn't on the encounter table. Well, from what I understand, the encounter was already occurring. (laughs) Yeah. So... Chris, we ended off with you yeah. staring at an opposite door on the other side of the hallway. Do you remember that? Sort of. So, you were in the room with the pool. It, you went up a set of steps, and then you saw a hallway. To the left, there was space. To the right, there was space. And right across you, there's a door. Okay. But suddenly, coming at you, there are two skeletons. Uh oh. What do you want to do? I mean, I guess I have to attack them. In that case, we're going to roll for initiative. Andres, do you remember how to do that? Oh, am I here too? I thought the party was split. I don't know what's no. going on. Rolling. Andres, don't oh, you remember the song? Cool. Do I need to sing the song? No. God, no. I rolled a one, so... I think I think my dex is a plus two, but that doesn't really help me. It really... No, my initiative is a plus zero. What am I talking about? I'm an alchemist. <laughs> Well, at level 8, you can boost it. No thanks. Wait, I didn't do my level up at 4. You didn't? We talked no. about it. Several I, wait. times. Oh no, we, did we talk about the fact that I had done it, or did we just talk about the fact that I needed to do it? Because I don't remember doing it. 
Oh no, all that happens at level four is is the boost. Yes. And something with your alchemy. No, I don't think anything happens with the alchemy. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I don't care. I'm looking at my pluses though. I didn't change it. Okay. I, I have added nothing to my scores. It's okay. I'm not fussed. Did you at least roll your initiative? Uh, yeah, I, I, I told you, I rolled a one. Having a great start. Um, let us roll. Let's oh! As bad as I am, I'm having a two. <laughs> two plus what? Well, uh, it's plus dexterity, correct? Yeah. Yes. I believe that's a three. But let me double check. It's plus four. Plus four. Ah, so I get a five. Hmm. I got the five. You rolled a two, right? Yes, two. So you got six. six. Five. So got... Oh, oh yes, two. it's right. So guess Seven. who's going last? Me. Okay. You so, literally can't roll less than a one. The skeleton is going to approach you, Thitch, and remember, you're standing in the doorway, so at the moment, they can only really target you. And okay. the first one that's approaching you, he has a short sword. Oh, yes. Does a Let's see what they nine done. beat your armor class? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. I know. Well, now Skeleton 2's gonna go. And he's gonna try to shoot you. Escalators, escalators, escalators. Eels. eels. Well, for you it's eels. Oh. <laughs> he hit. Give me a pencil. That would probably be a good idea. Yet, yeah. he shot you in the stomach for seven damage. Me. Um, no, Thitch. Okay. Oh, dang. Wait, what was the thing that he beat? Did he really beat my armor class? He got a natural 20. Oh. Plus yeah, that doesn't mean <laughs> uh, I guess I'm I get I'm immune to critical hurt. successes. How much <laughs> damage? Um, it was seven damage. All right. Hit me again, I tell you. Well, it is your turn, so... <laughs> Are you about to bushify these skeletons? Yes, hopefully. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him with one fist. And what do I get? A 13 plus my fists. That should be plus your dex mod plus proficiency. It's so serious. plus 6 overall. So a 13 plus 6, 19. Yes, you hit. All right. Roll down. Nice. Now, do I get to hit another uh, well, roll? First roll damage. It's going to be a 1d4 plus 4. <laughs> 1d4 plus 4. 6. Okay. By the way, I should tell you that if you move back into the room, the skeleton with the bow isn't going to be able to reach you. Okay. Yeah. 
And you also have a bonus action attack if you want to try to punch that sword skeleton again. Sure, let's go for it. Uh, oh, an 18. Okay, that hits. And this time it's just going to be the D4, not with your modifiers. A 3. Okay, yeah. You've, like, knocked off some of his bones now. And that's the end of your turn unless you want to move. Uh, unless if I move, you say? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the only thing left you can do. Okay, I guess I step away? Where do you step to? Do you step further into the hall? Uh, do I see further into the hall to see any, uh, if there's any monsters? Can't hear you. Okay, so remember, you stepped out slightly into the hall, and to the left is where the skeletons are coming from. Oh, can I not step to the right? To the right? Um, it doesn't seem to be leading anywhere. Just kind of a dead end. Then there's the okay. that cave that you just came from. And across from that is a door. Okay, uh, can I go back to Earth Mover? Yes. Can I just run back to him? Yeah, I'm going to okay. run to Earth Mover. Do you tell him what happened? Yes, as fast as I can. Okay, Earth Mover, it's your turn. Um, all right, not really sure what to do about that. I charge in there. <laughs> Okay. okay. Earth mover charges in. Uh, can I get a recap? There's two skeletons in the hall. A close one with a sword and a further one with a bow. <laughs> uh, I have, I'm an Eldritch Blast down the hallway. Okay. And that is... That's on me. That's for me to do. That, that one isn't a save. It's fine. Uh, does a 15 beat the swords armor class? Yes. Cool. Oh my god. What? Uh, two damage. Okay. Yeah, you... Oh. Um, Knock off one of his ribs. He's not looking well. That was worthwhile. Anything else you can do? No. Okay, that's going to bring us up back to the skeletons. And the one with the sword's going to try to swing at you. I'm assuming a 17 beats your armor class? Yeah. And he, uh, four damage? Oh, God. I'm not much for this world. What? You had full health when you entered this encounter. Oh, I just subtracted from the wrong number. I'll be fine. <laughs> I was looking at alchemical stamina. I'm like, I only have 14 <laughs> left. I'm going to die in here. <sighs> All right, cool. Yeah, no. yeah You're wrong number. Four character. I, I mean, I... <laughs> I don't know, man. Wizard used to have a D4 hit die. This is 5th edition. This is 5th edition, and it's not a wizard, but you know what I mean. And now, the skeleton with the bow is going to try to shoot at you. Okay. I'm guessing a 4 doesn't beat your armor class? No, it does not. Yeah, he shoots wide, which is going to bring us to Thitch. By the way, Earth All Mover, right, where are you yeah. standing? Are you standing like in the doorway or in front of it, or how, how are you working there? 
Who, me? Yeah, just wondering, like, where in this hall you're standing. Um, how long is the hall? So, it'll go about, um, 15 feet, then go up some steps, which is where the skeletons came from. And then immediately across from the entrance you walk through, there's a door. Alright, I'm just, like, a couple feet into the hall. I'm not, like, super far in. Okay. Close enough to Eldritch Blast the sword one. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, that's your turn. Alrighty then. Let's see what I roll. I charge back in there, and I go to punch that broken skeleton. Okay. Oh, yes, I rolled a perfect one. Wah, wah, wah. If they heard okay, it. I can yeah, you on. slip on the wet steps, well, you're not and you punch... punch. Earth mover. Hey, no, 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 no! I've got. I can reroll ones. Remember? Oh, right. I roll an eleven. Plus four. a double one. Wait. Yes. Plus six overall, right? So no, no, no. Plus hit. plus. Uh, yes. Okay. Roll damage. All right. Let's see. Rolls the damage. I got a two. That's a six. Yep. It just collapses into a pile of bones. Yes, and I go to punch another one. Okay, yeah. You have enough movement speed to charge the other guy. Yes, let's go. Let's roll! A 10 plus. What was it again? Plus. Martial six. arts, unknown strike. Oh. Uh, 10 plus 6, 16. That hits. Nice. Let's roll more damage. It's a four plus a four. Actually, I looked it up. It's actually four, I believe. Yeah, one d four plus four, so it's eight. Well, you add the dex modifier to the primary attack damage, but not to your second attack. So <sighs> that time you just did four, but hey, that's still full damage. So yeah, that's true. yeah, you um knock. Your fist straight through this guy's ribs. And it goes all the way through. Like, he's still, like, standing, but okay. yeah. He did not appreciate that. Which is going to bring us to Earth Mover. Um, I will step further into the hall and... Oh, no, that's probably a bad idea. I'm going to spike instead. Remember, Thitch is standing pretty much inside of him, so be careful. Whatever you're about Can I to duck? do. Oh no, Sp Spike and is a deck save. Is it an area of effect thing? It's uh, yeah, all creatures within whatever the square is makes the deck save. Okay, good thing he has really good dexterity. Exactly, that's why I chose to do the spike instead. <laughs> you at least gotta give him a heads up. No. <laughs> It's a okay. deck save for oh, a wow. reason. I mean, if, if I gave him a heads up, wouldn't they both have advantage? I mean, this is why you guys should come up with a code. Probably. Okay, the skeleton got a 20. No! Not a natural 20, a mod. Okay, it still beats it. Okay, Thitch, what'd you get? Come on, hold on. Ugh, this is the worst roll I could ever do. Was it a two? No, it was a three. Oh, yeah. You I mean, three, pl three plus my saving throw dex? Yeah. Yes. Six, nine. Now you need to be at 12. <laughs> so, uh, kindly, 
Oh, great. Now I roll good damage. I have a five. Five damage. Andres, is Spike fireball for alchemists? Yes. Okay, that's going to bring us to Skeleton 2. Uh, yep. I'm an abject failure. So it's just going to try to uh, headbutt Fitch. Yeah. Ouch. And it misses. It actually, like, hits against the wall of the cave and shifts its own skull. Brutal. Okay. Fitch, your no. turn. Reminder that the earth just spiked you. And by that I mean like an actual spike came out of the earth. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Maybe Earth Mover should take up volleyball. What? No. Different kind yeah. of spiking. Oh. What do you want to do? And his mic's muted. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Okay. Just go when you're ready. All right. Uh, what am I doing again? Rolling? It's, it's your turn. Right. I'm going to punch something. Hopefully the skeleton. Yes. <laughs> I roll a 13. Look, that's what you rolled? Yeah, a natural 13. Okay, plus your mods, that hits. So, roll damage. I roll a 4. Yep. You just get a, another good hit straight through this guy's spine and he collapses as well. Oh, nice. Congratulations, oh, nice, you just nice. collapsed two skeletons. Yeah. Is Earth Mover going to collect any bones? Uh, yes, I'm going to collect all of the bones. Yeah. Do you uh, look them over, check for quality? Yeah, I'm only taking things that don't have like a lot of blemish. Yeah. Oh, so by the way, on the skull of the skeleton closest to you, now that you have a chance to look at it, you actually notice that there's an M carved into it. All right. Uh, how much alchemical stamina does it take to absorb all of this into the the uh, club? How much did we say it did last time? I mean, not the club, the hammer. I don't remember at all how much we said it cost. That's why I was asking. Maybe you should just put them in your bag and... We deal with that later. All right, because I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the M. You're not gonna bring it with you? That'd no, no. I mean, I'm going I'm going to leave that. Like, I'm not going to oh, oh, leave that part. I'm gonna keep that gonna surface. In the hall. No, 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 no. Okay. So now that we've got him warmed up, what do you guys want to do? I mean, I guess continue. Okay. So hallway to the left, door to the in front of you. Probably door. Um, yeah. Okay, you're going to try to open it? I guess, I'll let yeah. Him open it. Yeah, you can open it. It feels um, shut, stuck. <laughs> it feels <laughs> shut. Afraid. Yes, that's why I was trying to open it. <laughs> it feels stuck closed. Okay. Um, I push harder. Yep, it's pretty. Is it held by a mason? Is it <laughs> held by masonry? Is it held by well, stone? I mean, it's it's a wooden door, but it is surrounded by stone. If you wanted to, you could try to break oh, down. I was, about the stone. To, I was about to say it's wooden <laughs> wooden door. Let's That's try it out. Yeah, but it's like a really solid. But yeah, yeah. If you want, you can try to break oh my the surrounding rock. God. The first time is this the first time? Nineteen. Oh my gosh, rolled natural. Wait, 19. what exactly are you trying to do? Well, I'm gonna try and break the frame to see if we can get around the door. 
Okay, let me double check how your mason tools work. Your knowledge of masonry allows you to spot weak points in brick walls. You deal double damage to such structures with your weapon attacks. And Wait, you also have there again? You deal double damage to structures with your weapon attacks. And you also have a hammer and a chisel, so. Nice. Yeah, well, you already yield the 18 for the attack. Let me see what these walls are made of. Trying to figure out how to adjudicate this. That is a fantastic word. Thank you. Okay. So. Definitely. I know you can do this. We do it right. Demolition. Yeah. And you got the 18 on the attack roll earlier, right? Hello, mm. Fitch. Yes. Yes. Yeah? What was that? Okay. Sorry. Okay, tell you what. I can We're going to turn this into a skill challenge. Pretty much what that means is you guys are going to try to make a series of skill checks against this door to try to force it open. Okay. And the first one was kind okay. of with your masonry tools to try to break away some of this stone. That was kind of able to weaken the hinge areas. So you've got your first of three successes that you need. What else do you guys want to try to do? Nice. I'm gonna just. I think. I, can I just? Yeah. No. I, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ham at it with my. Uh, with Bone Crusher. At, at the door, not I mean, not the surrounding area. I mean, it it's looks a like wooden a door. door. It's wooden, though. Remember, Bone Crusher is a hammer, not an axe. That's true, that's true. I'm going to use the frying pan instead. Mm, wow. Don't you have a 10 for strength? No, I have a 13. You do? Yeah. Hmm. I get plus I got a plus 2 to it from uh from being a Goliath, so. Oh. Otherwise it'd be an 11. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I'm going to go for something that's actually going to do a decent amount of damage to it. So um, You can tap some kind of skill check to see how this door's operating or think of something to try to bring it down. Mm. Wait, can I just pull the pins out of the hinges? Yeah, that could be part of this. So, um, Okay, how, how would you do that? Like, What skills would you implement? Like, I, I like the idea, though. I don't know, maybe sleight of hand? Okay, um, what tools do you have? A dagger? What else? I don't know, man. I don't know if it could be used for the. Hang on. Figure this out. I, I, I have the spade still. Okay, yeah. A spade is a full size shovel. Yeah. Uh, and a club. That's the best I can. I don't know what else here would be useful. The frying pan. I don't know what else would be useful remotely. How do you take mm. down a door? You, you, a you go straight through it. Frying pan. I would like to go through it, but you're saying that that's Do I have like an, an axe? option. Don't I have an axe? Do you? Someone probably does. Alternatively, I could just spike the door because it can't succeed a dexterity saving throw. I 
And I'm liking um, that plan because it's abusing game mechanics, which I chiefly condone. Uh, what? You're going to spike the door? I can't jump out of the way. Hmm. Unless you Where are proposing are you spiking the door exactly, like just the center, the center of the door. Okay. Actually, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be stupid. Where the <laughs> lock mechanism is. Okay. Okay, let's do this a little. Okay, so roll damage. Can do. Six. Wait, I get to add things to that, don't I? Do you? I would imagine... No, I guess I don't. No, I don't. What kind of stats does a door have? Hello? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm gonna say you, like, severely beat up the door, looks really um, splintered, but it's still kind of holding on. You might be able to okay. break it down at this point. So, Thitch damaged the hinges, and you damaged the lock. In area. Yeah. You got both sides of it. But you still feel like something's kind of holding this together. Alright. Okay. So, what you're saying is, the two places where it contacts anything other than itself are broken, but it's still there. Well, they're damaged. Okay. I was going to say, do we need to have a seance so the ghost holding it in place goes away? I mean, what do you want to try to do? I don't know. Go straight through it, rip it off the hinges. Okay, if you want, you can try to make a strength check to bust your way through. Yeah, I'm going to go for a bone crusher. Are you, you going to try to bone crush it or just... I know. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just. Do you have a uh, Alicia's crowbar? I don't. Okay, never mind then. Cause she had two of those things. Did she? Yeah. No, I don't have them. Um, no, I guess I'll just grab it and wrench. Don't you push? No, on which side of the hinges? Or which side the of the door, door the opens hinges? inward. Okay, then we can't see the hinges. Wait. In that case, I guess the door has to open outward because I've already established that he's done stuff to the hinges. Yes. So okay. I'm I'm pulling. Yes. Okay. Door mechanics. What am I What am I rolling for this? Uh, this is going to be a straight strength check. Okay. But you guys have done stuff to lower the DC. Uh, fifteen. Okay, yeah, with a 15, the door just comes ripping down, and you actually see a table fall with it. Make a dexterity saving throw to jump out of the way. Oh, God. Nope. Glad to do. Where was Thitch stand? And, uh, uh, I feel like this just kind of fell into the doorway, so Thitch, you're probably fine. Okay. Earth mover. You take two table damage. Great. And you get the feeling that that was at least part of the reason why the door wouldn't open. So you mean the door wouldn't open because it was being pushed in the direction it opens. It was being held closed with the table. You realize that actually it wasn't the whole table. Wow. You actually broke apart part of this table and the table was actually like, partly fastened to the door. You just caused oh, the whole God. thing to collapse. Alright. And as soon as that happens, you hear someone yell something in Goblin. Uh, something I don't speak. Exactly. But you at least know what it sounds like, so you can identify it as Goblin. Okay. Um... Is there really only and one strength based? Okay. Now we're back. Yes, just athletics. And we are now back after a three week hiatus mid episode. We started recording an episode three weeks ago and then stopped. Because it was too short to publish as an episode. 
and we thought we were just gonna immediately get back a few days later. Huh, huh, huh. That was your naivety. I knew that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Now, since I know you don't remember what happened, Andres, I can make up all my physics mistakes. That's and I know you're not going to listen to the episode, so you can't call me out on them. That's fine. I I mean, I'm the person that went a month and a half without ever doing my ability score increases or even giving myself more health after a level up. So yeah. I'm, do- I'm doing that as we speak. Anyway. <sighs> So, when we had left off, you had just ripped down a door. What? Okay. Um, okay. I'm just going to trust this D8. And you heard some goblin shouting. And by that I mean the language of goblin. You don't necessarily know if it was a goblin speaking. Um. <sighs> Oh yeah, we never said it on screen, but Fitch eats goblins. Oh. <laughs> that was a joke, I hope. I hope. I don't control your characters. Yet. What kind of a DM do you think I am? Okay. To be fair, a better one than that. So, you rep down the door, there was some wood stuff nailed to the back of it that you have a feeling was help, helping keeping it in place. Not Whoa. anymore. And there's goblinoid shouting. This is the part where you do something. I cannot hear you. Hold on. <laughs> this is I the part where you yes, run can. away. Okay, now I just realized I was muted. I need to see how much more alchemical stamina I get at level four. I'm I'm leveling up right now. It's fine. You're leveling up right now. It's fine. If I go grab something to eat, no. (laughs) Someone needs to be competent right now. You know, All right. m- maybe one day I'll have like an entire party full of competent players. Do you think I can do that, Andres? No. <laughs> Considering I am what passes as competent, no. All right. Um. Oh, by the way, I want you to, guys to know that we're playing Doctor Who style uh, D&D, where if your character dies, they get reincarnated as a new character, and someone else plays them. I don't like that. <laughs> I dislike that as well. Okay, what are you guys doing? I'm waiting. Okay, that's just gonna wait in the hall. That's a terrible idea. Oh, we're already in game. Yes. yes. Okay, what is the, uh, what's, what's the situation? He ripped down a door and then people from inside the room started shouting. Shouting? In yeah. Goblin. In Goblin? In yes. Thing. So we call goblin Slayer? That. I'm kidding. I would call the Goblin Slayer? <laughs> You're the Goblin Slayer. <laughs> not oh. necessarily. Technically, not think that. Is. That's not necessary. It doesn't have to be violent. I wouldn't mind if it's violent, but it doesn't have to be violent. Is this conversation in-game? I don't know. So. Probably not. Yeah. Oh, and Maria's there too. Oh. Did she get we, here? we keep forgetting that Maria exists. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, I, I just barge into the room. Okay. You uh, see five bugbears. Fantastic. Are they that good or bad? And so. Old stone bunks line the walls of this barracks, which is lit and heated by a glowing iron brazier in the middle of the room. Thanks to this brazier, it's lit. (laughs) There's a door on the other side of the room, and the whole thing is about uh, 25 feet by 15 feet. Okay. 
I just walk straight towards the other door. I ignore the bugbears entirely. Our bugbears are fire. Um, one of them is gonna stop and say, "Halt! What are Why? you doing here?" The bugbears. I'm crossing the room. Are you the cable guy? Yes. Okay. Can you help us fix our cables? They keep breaking when we try to suspend things. Sure thing. Because that's the only kind of cables that they have. Yeah, they don't have fiber optic cables. They don't have <laughs> anything approaching TV. So, wh- why did you rip our door down? You're open it. It's. I'm a little impatient. Sorry about that. By the way, Earthmover, what's your passive perception? Passive perception? Pa- yeah. uh, 12. Okay. You notice that they've started to sort of move around now that you're in the room. Fitch, what are you doing? Hold on. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm outside and going in, correct? Yes. Now, are you? Uh, I'm looking around. I notice the bugbears and... So you're actively wait. looking? Yeah, looking around. Seeing okay, make a perception it. check. Okay, let me log in here quickly. Because, you know, net technological problems, there's not I have to use my phone. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Come on, look faster. Yes, I love it. I'm character list. Come on. Let's see. Let me guess as I'm looking it up. Which one am I looking for? Uh, perception. Perception. I'm perception in that. Plus three. Therefore, I'm going to roll a D20. Just in case anyone was wondering how skill checks worked. I rolled a D20. 1 D20. I don't know. Add RP. Oh, no. At RP bot. I wonder if I have any food in here. Oh, do you have any pasta in your drawer? No, but I do have a tea bag and some cold water. Oh, yes. Inside jokes are always... Are you serious? Quality podcast this, material. This is why I don't use this, your, your bot drill. Look, look. I rolled a 20 and it gave me a 3. Okay, 3 plus 3 is 6. Yeah, honestly, with all these hard shuffling bugbears, you're not really able to put anything together. All right, so I uh, I crouch down on the ground to start drawing a circle. And say, All right, bring your cables <laughs> over to me. I, we're, Wait, we're trying. One second, I need to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your approach to everything? Just like one second, guys. I got to show you something. I mean, if it's a, it's something that no one really knows about, so I can take advantage of that and be like, I mean, hey, all right, wh- it works. You're playing your character, but okay, okay, please continue. So, I'm like, all right, so bring your cables in. We're trying a new experimental technique for fixing cables. Yeah. And so I start drawing a circle. Yeah. Um, One second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of them, he's going to uh, get out a cable, and he says, this is actually one of our good ones, just so you have something to compare it to, and he's going to get down to the ground. Okay. And he's going to, like, tie it up, and now there's just, like, a random tangled mess right in front of you, and he looks really confused. Well, that's not right. <laughs> All right, um... Fire. Okay. So they're they're like all gathered around me, right? Yes. Okay. Um. They are he, all gathered around you. Awesome. That's obvious now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So there's now a tangled tangled uh cable on mm-hmm. on the circle. Yep. All right. Cool. I, uh, wait, hang on, let me make sure. 
Yeah, cool. Uh, elemental burst. <laughs> what exactly does that do? Uh, everybody in range has to make a dexterity saving throw or take. I'm going to go ahead and expend a, a point of alchemical stamina, an extra point of alchemical stamina for this one. So okay. they have to say make a dex save or take uh, 2d8. I'm going to say fire. I get to choose fire, cold, or lightning. I'm going fire damage. And I know this isn't exactly how area of effect spells work, but since it's emanating out from the circle, I'm going to say that Ditch pretty much has full cover here. Okay. Unless one of them gets, like, an amazing dodge, he's probably not going to get hit. Oh, it doesn't really, like, it's... I have to make a deck save. Because I'm close enough to the circle for oh, it to yeah, be a I, problem. You're caught up in the explosion. But yeah. So, say that again. You're Wait, fine. He's going to make a fiery explosion that's probably not going to hit you. Okay. Oh, right. I have several D20s. I can roll them all at once. What is that? Is it deck save? Oh, he has full cover. It literally can't hit him. Well, unless one of them like completely jumps out of the way, like some crossfires might. Okay. Okay. Well, one of them definitely doesn't. Okay, so it's Dex. Yeah, Dex too. They, be- they got to beat a twelve. Okay, so. Wait, no, hang them- on. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. They have to beat a thirteen. Okay, one of them still makes it. One of them got a critical miss. We're gonna say that the guy already on the ground got the critical miss. Okay. You just got a face full of fire. And how'd you fire? do? I thought you said there were five of them. Yes, he got a face full of fire. I only heard reports of two. Oh, uh, yeah, the other three missed. Just okay. uh, spectacularly. Okay. So only one of them didn't get hit. Yes. Cool. Okay, cool. Now, because there's multiple targets, they all take the same damage from the attack, or do I have to roll a but loaded oh, the game. Yes, you roll just once. Okay, that's what I thought. Since you're rolling for the strength of the effect. Exactly. That's that's why I figured, but I just wanted to go ahead and double check there. So that's two d eight damage. I passed. I got a fourteen. I barely passed. Okay. So. Cool. Cool. What about, uh, you want to roll? Uh, no. I was only gonna make you do that if one of them got a natural twenty. Okay. Uh, Cool. So I uh, nine damage, which means one of them takes eighteen damage. Okay. Awesome. Okay, the guy on the ground bursts into flames and is dead. Awesome. Yeah, that's one way to go. Oh, out of curiosity, what happened to the cable? <laughs> oh yeah, just complete cinders. Awesome. Do you have any interest in collecting ash? Not really. Not unless it's my grandmother. <laughs> what ash it is? Is it? Okay. <laughs> I mean, if we find my grandmother and she dies, I'm cremating and carrying those ashes around. Andres, that's not character. what I was saying okay to. I meant let's move forward. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Confusion what happened. Okay. I just I just burnt one of the bugbears to a crisp and three of them are well, what reason? one of them is fine. Okay. Oh and by the way, those three are like severely injured. Yeah. They're all gonna back up. Okay. Well, I'm what starting reason? to get the feeling that you're not the cable guy. Wait, how would a cable guy even get into this mountain? <laughs> I'm starting to notice a big flaw in our plan. What do you think, Dave? Oh no, Dave's dead. <laughs> okay, so um, should we be rolling for initiative? Yeah, that's um, what I'm thinking. Maybe not yet. They're you actually got them pretty good right now. All right, cool. They might not like, want to attack. So let's talk through this. What's behind that door? M- more cave. <laughs> more. What's in that said more cave? Um. Actually, one second. <laughs> well, if you go through that area, you'll end up what we in what we like to call room twelve. 
I don't know why it's called that. Twelve right. was just kind of carved in one of the walls. I, I assume it had significance to the original dwarves that lived here. We just call it Room Twelve. Okay. Yeah, it's um, a um, old smelter cavern. There's a blast furnace in there and everything. It's a little old. Well, what do you do in Room Twelve? Um. Well, we just kind of hang out there, you know. We've been see. needing to clean it up. There's just kind of some scattered bodies. Okay. Take me to room 12. Uh, the, that door's unlocked. You, you can go yourself. All right. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not going to stop you. They're too intimidated by the fact that I literally reduced one of them to embers in yes. a single go. All right. Works for and me. Also, Rim, this is like a super magical mountain. For all they know, you're like some dwarven god. <laughs> I'm huge. Exactly. Dwarven That's god? why you would be godlike to the dwarves. Oh, there's that. Maybe you're like the king of the dwarves. Or maybe you're like the one from um, Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> who was tall enough to box around Thor. Yeah. As God was supposed to protect us. And that's about as much spoilers we're going to give. I haven't seen that one. Yes, you have. Uh, Which one? Infinity War. Oh, yeah, I have. Okay, we've talked about that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you're going to walk into room 12? Yeah. Yeah, so you walk in, and a blast force and mechanical bellows powered by a water mill dominate this large chamber. The furnace is cold and dark, but heaps of coal are piled nearby along with carts full of unrefined ore. The water reel sits in a ten-foot-wide channel cut into the floor of the room, but the channel has gone dry. Passages exit to the west, south, and east. The empty channel exits to the north and east. More than a dozen withered corpses are scattered around the room. These slain dwarves and orcs are still wearing the remains of their armor. Floating above them is a skull engulfed in green flames. Oh, oh. yeah, did we forget to mention the skull? And he slammed the door. Okay. I'm not super concerned. I'm just gonna, like, completely ignore the skull. I'm, I'm liking the tactic I'm going with. I'm gonna completely ignore the skull, walk into the room, and start inspecting the water well. What brings you to this chamber? I hear you've got a water problem? Water has not flown down this path for many years. What are you talking about? We saw water in a river back there. There are water. There are many waters in this cave, but they are not my jurisdiction. What is your jurisdiction? I protect the treasure of the mighty Room 12. What is the treasure of the mighty Room 12, may I ask? Why should I tell you outsiders? <laughs> roll charisma, roll charisma! Because <laughs> uh, I'm curious. Hmm. Is, that, is that persuasion? I think so. <laughs> Roll, Roll with it. disadvantage. Roll it. Roll with disadvantage. <laughs> Harsh. All right, that's a fifteen. Dude, and a it's six. an ancient flaming skull, and all you said was, "I'm interested." <laughs> yeah. Also, um, I'm go I'm gonna like start. I'm gonna do an elemental burst, not for damage. I'm literally just because the cold is water based. I'm gonna start flowing water through the uh, through the water thing. Okay. First, what was your disadvantage roll? A oh, six. Okay. Which sucks, because my normal was a 15. Do not trust you. You are intruders. I mean, that's probably fair. <laughs> I, I do my circle. Be gone, or you shall be visited by my wrath. Are you at all affiliated with M? The one known as M passes through here, but he does not attempt to steal my treasure, so I have no quarrel with him. Does he is he even like vaguely aware of the existence of your treasure or like does he just kind of walk through? The great and noble M is a scholar 
and a historian who simply wants to learn of the great dwarves that once wandered through these mines. The ones who sent me here to guard their treasure and who shall reclaim it one day. Bet. I, I, I flow water through the thing. How exactly does this work? I mean, it shoots water in a cube. So I'm assuming that I'm just basically shooting water in a cube, but running it at the 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 paddle wheel. Yes. Yeah, so that wheel kind of powers like the ancient bellows. Right. And so, like, you flow water through it, and those and everything just starts moving to life. It really is a testimony to the, you know, uh, workmanship that everything is still working. Yeah. Yeah, the bells start going up and down, blowing air. Dust just starts flying everywhere into the furnace. I mean, the furnace isn't lit, so it's not no, like it's stoking no. a fire. You come to relight the ancient forge? I mean, yeah. Maria? Yeah. <laughs> Who does still exist? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she the one that has the staff right now? Is she? You're the one who got it. Did you give it to her? That would seem to make the most sense. It's, okay. it's She asks, it's her, is this it's her forge the great planar forge that we seek? And he says, no. The forge of the plains lies deep within these mines. Uh. All right, so I'm gonna do a second one of fire into the into the actual furnace. Well, there's no coal in the furnace, but there is like a um, there's mounds of coal nearby. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm throw some coal in and then blast some fire in. Okay. I mean... Steadily. Yeah, like, all, all this equipment still works. You, you now have a furnace blowing. Or cool. Does this impress the skull at all? Why? It burns again. They told me that one would come to rekindle the forge. Hi. Lighting the forge? They said... That one, a master of earth, would come, and a slayer of the bushes. I have no <laughs> idea what that means, but... <laughs> that is definitively us. I'm going to spike the wall. How much stamina are you burning through? A lot. Yeah. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Okay, you know what? Roll that uh, charisma again, this time with advantage. You're really impressing the skull. All right, cool. Uh, that's a 15. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You must be the promised ones that would go to the ancient forge of clan Mystic Hammer and reclaim the bridge between this plane and the earthen plane. Allow me to help you in your journey. Sure. And um, suddenly the green flames that he's engulfed in suddenly turn black, and two corpses stand up, and they stand at attention facing you. They are two dwarves, both equipped with pickaxes. Alright. Are they here to harm us? No. No, they're standing at attention facing the two of you. Or three. Three. There are three of you. I didn't forget. Three <laughs> until here. Uh. There's people that too. Drew, I think you're the worst at remembering she exists. That's funny beyond belief. Maria? These two shall help you in your journey. Thank you very much, oh great Oh, by the way, <laughs> good thing that you guys were able to talk your way through this, because this is a super powerful monster. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe. Who can, you know, summon zombies, and there's a room with some bugbears right behind you. Yeah. 
That was like a lose lose if we got into combat on this one. Yeah. All right, yeah, cool. You actually, I'm um, hear a shout from the other chamber for some reason in common saying, Yeah, those losers are totally going to get pwned. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Pwned? No one said that since 2012. Well, 2012. Yeah. You don't know what year it is here. No, tell you what, do you remember what year it is? Give me a second. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I can't remember what exact day it is. In Anymore. Game. Yeah, there are... And now there are pathways to the um, east, north, and south that you can go to. Alright. I, I, I tell the uh, reanimated corpses to lead the way. I'm afraid that they do not know the way through this mine. Do you? I must stay here and guard this area. You can tell us where to go? Mm. A uh, pathway to the ancient planar forge was not something that I was entrusted with. What is that? Did you trust me enough? I was never meant to be around this long. That's I've fair. Spent many years asleep. Are Waiting for people to return to the mines. I don't even know how many years it's been. Well, here we are. So, we're going to go find the Planar Forge. Mm. Well, I'm curious. What about you? What, so, then who told you what your job was? The ancient keepers of this mind. They brought me here. They created me, or perhaps summoned me. I'm not sure whether or not I existed before this place. Powerful? Mm. I mean, I guess powerful. I have to be powerful. Yes. All right. So there are three doors other than the ones other than the one we came in through. Uh, well, not doors. They're just kind of. Open hall like things. Okay. Um, well, so, I say scan from left to right. So we're gonna go. I, I I'm gonna make a start towards the one on the far left first. Um, you came from the left. You said there's three doors other than where we are. Yeah. You can go north, south, or east. Okay. Relative to my perspective, I'm going left. So from west, where that your character's was, facing. Okay, far left from the perspective of the door we walked in through. If we walked in through west, oh, that would be north. Okay, that, that would be going north, yes. So you kind of want to go through the remains of the um, stream area. I guess, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, this is kind of like a um, dug-in stream. Goes down a few feet. You're going to pass it through. It's all very smooth, though. Okay. And after a while, you come to an ancient collapsed cavern. A wide rift fills the eastern half of this cavern. A stream pours out of the west wall, then tumbles down into the rift and flows out again to the north. Several ropes are secured to iron stakes along the western edge of the rift, leading down to the chasm floor. So basically, you've approached a giant hole. And in that hole, there's a stream down there. But it's not flooded. Okay. Um, how wide was the was the rift? It is about 15 feet. And there are ropes and iron stakes on the one side, but on the opposite side of where you're coming, but not on your side. Okay. And the water flows down into the cavern from the west side, which is where the iron stakes are. Fifteen feet, you say? Yes. Cool. Um, Note to self, make 25-foot chasms. 
<laughs> Manipulate element. I'm, I'm going to just... You better be keeping track of all the stamina you're burning. I absolutely am. I've burned through more than... No, almost half. Okay. Of my stamina. And I haven't done anything super useful yet. I don't know. I mean, you now have two zombies following you. That's true. That's true. I mean... I, I avoided a large amount of conflict by burning through stamina that I would have otherwise probably burned through more in conflict. So yes, um, but yeah, I'm bridge. Okay. Yeah, you're able to do that. You have a bridge across. Yeah. And so once you've crossed, you can either go to the right or to the left. Both kind of have stair areas, and they are separated by about um, about 25 feet total distance. So each one's about 12 feet away from you when you step off the bridge. Um, no, no I'll, I'll give this decision to someone other than myself. Bitch? Sure. Seriously? Why does this keep happening? What? Is he gone? Yes. What the heck? This is like the third time I've directly asked him about something right after he left. Alright. Oh, he's coming back. We oh, might get back home, but. You abandoned us. I did not. I, I, I merely just left. <laughs> Deserter. <laughs> 30 minute penalty. <laughs> Enjoy your queue time. My queue time. <laughs> Just for this, Anyways, you're gonna, the next time you go to the Department of Motorized Vehicles, you're going to have to wait another 30 minutes. <laughs> I hate because that you just called it by its full name. Okay, you guys just stepped off a bridge over a small cavern. And on either side of the bridge, about 12 feet away, are two small staircases that you can go up. Do you want to go left or right? What? What? <laughs> staircases? Well, steps, oh, not okay. really staircases. There's just a few steps. Oh. Each. Let's go left. Um, let me see. I'm going to roll a D2. What? It's called a coin. Yes. <laughs> no, you have to say it like a gamer. We're rolling a D2. Flipping a D2. Rolling a D2. I'm going to flip my D2 at you, Andreas, if you know what I mean. Wouldn't that be flipping D2? Technically, no, it's rolling D3. A D2. Okay, good. We, we all know what I'm referring to then. It's third digit, no matter which direction you count from. Why are you rolling it? I'm going right. Okay, to the right. So, you guys all go up this um, sort of Narrow steps to the right. Then once you're up there, you're going to immediately need to take a left turn, then another right, and up a few more steps. Okay. And by the way, I just want to remind you, you're walking over, like, stones and earth mover, you especially. Every time you walk, you're kind of, like, making echoes. Okay. Oh, oh no. It's the works. They can hear us. Perception. I'm not really concerned about people hearing us. Yeah, I'm there. It's not like the pirate woman's going to come out of nowhere. Yeah. And when you walk in, six <laughs> cracked marbled pillars line the walls of the hall, at the north end of which stands a nine-foot-tall statue of a dwarf seated on a throne, a mighty stone warhammer across his lap. Large emeralds gleam in the statue's eyes. The dust and debris cover the floor, then swept to one side, and a campsite of sorts now spreads in front of the statue. Half a dozen bedrolls and packs are neatly arranged around a rough-built fire pit. A wooden table stands on the west side of the room between two pillars. So, just to clarify, we're entering the middle of the room, correct? Yes. So the there's east side. What is your camp area set up? That seems We're deserted. Okay. On the south side of the room is a giant door that you can assume you press in or something like that. On the north side of this chamber is the giant statue. On the south side is another door. 
You did not okay. come in through that door. Yes. I'm assuming there's another door on the other side of the room from where we are, aka the west side of the room. No. There's no other doors there. No okay. other doors except for the south yeah. one. I mean, underworld well, perception. Is well, there any other, other secret well, doors? Are you guys no. looking around the whole room? There's no one else in here, so you can just kind of look around. Uh, perception for any traps? I'm looking to see how old the tents look, like the camp area. Okay, well, first, I do want to say that once you walk in, pretty much parallel to the tunnel that you came through, there's a door. So there is some. Okay. Oh, it's yes. also on the east wall, then. Yes, I just want. Yeah, you guys just couldn't see that when you first walked in. Okay, cool. It's awesome. in between another, uh, other colors. Cool. Uh, I'm assuming there's no traps, right? I have to roll, get a roll perception. Yes. So. Um, you can investigate for traps. Okay. Uh, deep neck ten plus. Huh? I'll investigate for traps. Okay. Plus, uh, I got a total of eleven. Yeah, with a total of eleven, you don't really find anything. I mean, yeah, you just kind of walk around. Everything seems chill. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, Andres, you want to try to investigate anything? No, how, I old, think... how old does the camp area look? Okay, roll for investigation. Investigation. There's my T20. Mm-hmm. Oh, that didn't go well, did it? Seven plus... Mm-hmm. Investigation. Uh, ten. Okay. So, I'm actually going to... Since you're specifically investigating the camp, you are able to notice that the fire is still burning. And the okay. fire is not releasing any smoke. It's not releasing any smoke. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much all you're able to get. But that means it's a kind of a weird ethereal fire. This. Well, I don't know. Put your hand through it. See if it's a real fire. Not that kind of ethereal. <laughs> That's non-corporeal or incorporeal. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Um, I mean, what else is there? I'm going to knock on a tent flap of one of the tents. Right there are tents. Uh, no, it's just kind of a campsite. Like, they don't really need tents since they're underground. Or right. Or mountain, but... Yeah, there just seems to be, like, some sleeping bags set up here. Okay. Um... So that means there's been here before, but... I don't know yes. if it's... Is it recent? Uh, Earth Movement, or is it recent? Is it what? Is there signs of people who have been here recently, as I like mean, either today or yesterday? There's a fire burn. Wait, hang on. Let me check my inventory real quick. Wow, we have- word, words you never hear in a D&D campaign. <laughs> yeah, usually just throw things in your bag and forget about them. All right, I'm going to pull out a torch. Okay. And I'm going to try and light it with the fire, with the, with the campfire. Yeah, it lights just fine, but you actually do notice that smoke comes off of your torch. Okay. Can I try and pull a log out of the fire? Yeah, you do that. Okay. Is there smoke coming off of the log? No. Okay. So enchanted the fire. Does no. does the log appear to actually be burning? Like is yes. is log so log is going away? Yes, and it, like it seems blackened and everything. Okay. What about the the wood still on the fire? Yeah, that it otherwise seems like a normal fire. So, okay. I'm assuming someone put a spell on it so that there would be no smoke. Yes. What sort of spell would that have? Um, um Maria but, says, "Well, it's supposed to be some kind of abjuration to make it so that way the smoke is contained within itself or transmutation to change something about the nature of the flame. Or perhaps evocation to make the burning very pure so that no smoke is released. There's a number of ways that this could have been done. I I go ahead and run my hand across the top. Like, it's a hot fire, right? Yes. Okay. And you take... No, no, no. No, I said across... Like... Over the top. It's not like I'm running it through. And Andres runs through fire again. No. Uh, not again. 
Um, okay, I go ahead and set the log back in. Yep. I douse my torch as well. And by douse, I mean, like, stamp out. Okay. Yep. I'm so, uh, goal here in this cave is what again? Say that again. Our goal here in caves, uh, go to, to you're trying to find the ancient planar forge and to stop M, who is somewhere in this cave. Oh, we know he is in the cave. Uh, based on what you've been told, yes. Okay, cool. So, okay. Why you might have left? Um, he might not even exist. All right, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the statue. You, control move? you guys actually make it to the planar forge and then find out that there is no M. <laughs> there is no cake. I'm definitely not writing that down. Oh, Stop God. that. <laughs> Stop it. It, it's it's going to be a twist in a future plot line. Don't worry. He's not going to do that now. He's had too much suspense what? building up to there this one. He's actually L. Oh, my God. Stop oh, that. Um, okay, you can stop with stuff. And he knew you were coming. He knows everything about you because he's the world's greatest detective. Uh, I will leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get back to the game. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the statue. Just see if I notice anything unusual about it. Um. So... You- well, what exactly do you want to? Are you just trying to see if it's like regular stone, or are you trying to see something about the statue? No, are there like anything like levers or like weird weird things like that that would be different than just a decorative statue? Any, okay. Does anything about it seem functional? That would be right. another investigation. Yeah, that's why I said I was going to roll investigation. Wow, that was useless. What four? No, no, I'm a liar. Six. Okay, with a six total. Hmm. You know what? You have a feeling that there might be something going on here, but you just can't quite figure it out. Like, there's just so much magic in this area. It might be enchanted, but you're not sure. Okay. Uh, you describe... You, you gave me some free description of the statue. What was that again? Can you read that again from your TM notes? Yes. Thank you. So... Uh, so it's about nine feet tall, and he's seated on a throne with a mighty stone warhammer across his lap, and he has large, emerald-like eyes. Emerald-like? As far as you can tell, you're not sure. Okay. I asked Maria. She's the rock expert. Ah, yes, the geologist. Are those emeralds? Do those look like emeralds to you? She's going to get up really close and say, Yes, near as I can tell. They're emeralds, but I suppose it could just be a convincing illusion. I, uh... Are there any just, like, loose stones around on the ground? Um, yeah, we can say there's probably gonna be some of those. Cool, I gently lob one at the eyes of the statue. Oh, god, no. Okay. It bounces off. Okay, cool. Oh, good. And then the entire mine collapses. Okay. <laughs> Got you get it. A game over Can't screen. Over. Yeah, you get a game oh. over screen says, looks like messing with the ancient statue was a bad idea. Want to try again? <laughs> okay, let me try. I'm going to talk Mason okay. and skillfully only bring the statue. Let me see. Wait, you're going to climb on it? No, like Mason, you know. What exactly are you doing? I'm gonna try the statue. Touch it? I guess touch it. No, yeah, well, it just feels like stone. Hold on. No, I'm, you know, Mason, break it. Oh, you're gonna break it using your masonry yeah. tools. I rolled an 18. Wait, I wanna I wanna rub the the belly first. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, and did you add your proficiency bonus? See, let's see where it's oh. So you got an 18 plus. Uh, do I have anything? Okay, we're going to say this is. um. If you're just kind of trying to use your tools to attack it, this can be either dex or strength based. Dex based. Okay. It's an 18 plus and a plus 4 monitor. Okay. 
So yeah, you got a 22. You're definitely going to be able to get a really good hit on this, so roll me a 2d12 for damage. Jeez. 10 and 9. 19 overall, and you do double damage as a mason, so that's 38 damage that you just did to this ancient statue. Nice. By the way, are you going for, like, precision or just to break it? or? I mean, I guess I could fracture it in a specific way so that it falls in half. Yeah, like, well, where where are you aiming? Where are you attacking it from? The uh, base of the statue. I mean, it, it's sitting. Like, one of the legs, or? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, we can go for the legs. Okay. I'll just, whatever, whatever way we can get to the control of it. Okay, yeah, with that, you're just able to cleave right off the right leg. It just completely disconnects and falls to the side with a massive thud that just echoes through the whole mine. <laughs> Actually, with all the reverberations, it's one of the loudest things you've ever heard. Where's my deep four? Oh, that's awesome. And you each take four thunder damage. Oh my what? god. <laughs> yeah. We're in the cave. Well, thunder damage is sound damage. Oh. I don't know why it's not sonic damage, but you know. I don't know either. Okay. Nice going. Yep. Way to go, Paul. And you get a feeling that that sound wasn't just from a loud piece of stone hitting the ground. You get the feeling that there might have been something more there. All right, we're moving on. Hey, we try it again? <laughs> no. no. Well, I can, I mean. I want to go through the south door. Okay. Uh, so the south door is going to open up into a hallway, and you can, which has a dead end to the left, or you can go down to the right. Oh. If the, if the going through is a T-junction, then. Yes. Okay. It's a dead end to the left. Mm -hmm. And there's a door on the right. Yeah. All right. Well, door, obviously. Or actually, what, what all's in the hallway? Wait, we... sorry. It's not door on the right. It's just more hall on the right. Okay. Yeah, you open the door, T-junction, hall to the right. What else in the hall? Oh, we'll, go, we'll go to the right, away from the dead end. And remember, that's hall. Fi that's right facing the wall when you walk through the door. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wait, actually, I might be holding my map upside down. Yeah, no, no, that's to the left. My bad. Huh? Uh, I was looking upside down. You're going to the left, actually. Okay, so we're going directly over the room we entered initially. Yeah, if if you're just gonna go straight down, you're eventually going to come across. You can either keep going forward or find a hall to the right. And you realize that if you keep going forward, it's the cavern area from before. Okay. Yeah. You've basically gone in a giant circle. Okay. Uh, then I guess we're going to go back and go to the uh, the second door in, gonna, from the cavern. You're going to backtrack to the uh, statue room? To the statue room. Go through the other door. Okay. It's locked. Hasn't stopped me before. And I almost said this is a stone door, but that would make things easier for you. Yes, it would. <laughs> no, Please. this is still just a regular, very heavy-duty door. By all means, stone door. Um, all right, so what has been our policy on me using manipulate element? Um, right, because the bridge you let me do relatively freely, but more intricate tasks you've made me roll as a skill check as well. Yes. So is it just by the level of intricacy of the task that you may or may not ask me to do a skill check as well? Yes, because like... With the bridge, that's just going straight across. But if you mess, but you can actually mess this up and just cause a collapse, and then that area is no longer accessible. Right. 
Because remember, this uh, whole thing is stone. Okay. So then, um, maybe I shouldn't have destroyed that line. Because what I'm imagining you're doing is almost like a, um, like just like a giant crusher from right. the walls and the ceiling. Well then, opening a parabolic hole that I just take all of all of the material that is turning into the hole that we're walking through is thickening the support around proportionally. Oh. So it's literally not changing the, the weight distribution at all, because I'm not moving it to the floor, I'm moving it to the surrounding wall. You know, a certain arcane geologist might be able to help you with that. I'm the... Listen, I'm the mountain expert. I'll ask Maria for help. Yeah, so she's kind of going to um, basically expend a spell slot to lend you some aid, so you don't have advantage on this. She's like transferring some of her power to you. But you are absolutely making a, a skill check as well. Yes. Okay. See, I feel like when I'm specific about what I want to do to prevent you from making me roll a skill check, you make me roll a skill check. <laughs> it's a 16. Okay. Is that the highest? Huh? Oh, with advantage, sorry. Yes. Uh, they were both a 16, so it hardly matters. I wonder how often that happens. About 1 in 400th of the time, but... Thank you. <laughs> I almost said 1 out of 20, and I'm like, no, that's, that's not how that works. <laughs> Yeah, you're able to um, pretty much do what you set out to do. It, it's nothing fancy. And it's a little rugged around the edges, but yeah. Whatever. If it's big enough to walk through, it's big enough to walk through. And Actually, we're... It's, it's only six feet tall, so you'll have to crouch down. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> it's fine for Thitch. Great. Yeah. Fine for Maria, too. Yep. And the zombies. Oh, did the zombies get um, damaged from that leg? No. Don't ask these questions. I mean, you wouldn't really have a way of knowing. Like, they didn't. You don't see any outward signs of damage. Okay, so you're going through? Yeah. Well, yes. So. In this room, you see dusty draperies adorning the walls, and there's a bed and a brazier. And in the corner, there's a badly disheveled elf who lies bound and unconscious on the cold stone floor. But alive. Yes. Oh. They, they look like they've been there for a while. He looks like look he's in pretty bad shape. That doesn't answer my question. You can't necessarily tell. Okay. Does he look starved? I mean, you, you, you'll have to ask him. He's pretty unconscious. All right, my medicine I'm check. Saying, is is he skin of bones? No. You All right. Try medicine. T yeah. Well, I don't. My medicine check is only a plus two. I want someone more competent than me to, to me try check. that. Uh, medicine check, you say? Yeah, it's a wisdom. Wisdom. Hey, that's just a plus one for me. You can still try. What about Marie? Mary, uh, Maria? Yeah, I mean, Maria. if you want, you can try to help Earth Mover. Sure. Does that give me an advantage? Yep. Okay. Yeah. What do I roll? You don't. I don't roll. Got it. Yeah. You're basically just being his um, orderly. Ooh. That bodes well. Cool. 19. Yeah, with a 19, you're... Um, Able to sort of untie him, notice where he's kind of injured, and um, fix his bandages. And he definitely seems to be uh, breathing. Does he seem lucid at all, or is he passed out? What? Does he seem lucid at all, or is he completely passed out? He's unconscious. Okay. Uh, can I just put him in my backpack? Do you really want him to randomly wake up on you? Not really. Um, especially if you start thrashing around, it might hit his head and things. Uh, what else? You said there was a, like a brazier and a and a bed. Yep. Is there anything else of note in the room? So, 
As you look around some more, you actually notice a tapestry that seems very similar to the statue right outside. Okay. But I'm guessing this one has its leg attached. Yes. And okay. there's a very old chest. I, I, I moved to open the chest. It's a mimic! No, no. I was ready for it. I was yeah. totally ready for it. Yeah, I could tell based on the way you were like, wait. <laughs> so, yeah, you open the chest, and there's one old book in there. Ooh, books. Love books. What's the book? So, the book is titled The History of the Mystic Hammer. Of the Mystic Hammer? Yep. And I guess that's what we're going to call it for tonight. Yeah. I've been your host and Dungeon Master, Drew, and I'm being joined by... Earthmover. And... Sitch Urso.